Happy Easter. The spirit of Easter is the topic today on this auspicious day, very holy day for so many people in the world who profess to Christian faith and also those who love Christ. They may not call themselves Christian, but there are many more who love Christ. Today was the day when Christ was resurrected, day of resurrection. In fact, the Easter is supposed to be celebrated even before the Christ, as the day of rebirth, day of being reborn. That's what the Easter spirit is, awakening, resurrection, transformation, being reborn, coming again back to, from being reborn from from the flesh to the spirit. That's the real meaning of Easter. The resurrection of Christ is a very important part in the Christian faith. That he was crucified on Friday and he, the, the disciples, his mother, other ladies saw him on Sunday. There was a great joy. The message of Easter is, of course, a great joy. Message of Easter is also be fearless. Fearlessness, joyfulness, and reawakening, or awakening to the spirit, are in fact the spirit of Easter. Easter is in the spring season when the slumber of winter passes, everything seem, comes to, seems to coming back to life. The forest, the trees, the birds, nothing was there, all was quiet. There was no, you couldn't see the life so vigorous, so living things after when the spring comes. The almost seemingly dead trees, dead plants come to life, the flowers come, birds come, the leaves come. As if a dead thing comes to life, there is resurrection in that way. And it's, there are the symbols of Easter that's almost and white or white egg, white bunny. These are all about the fertility, about the birth, about uh, regeneration that it symbolizes. The, Easter, the egg is the symbol of new life, from that will come the new birth. It's also around this time comes Passover in Judaism, which is also a movement, a change from slavery to freedom. All that we pray from darkness to light, that's what the spirit of Easter is. Moving, transforming ourselves from slavery to freedom. We are not slave, are we? Of course we are. All we are slave, politically free, but spiritually we are still slaves of our wishes, our flesh, our impressions, our the desires, we are all slave to that. To be free from those is the message of Easter. Be free from the slavery of the flesh, slavery of the body and be reawakened to the freedom of spirit. That's what the Easter means. That's where the Passover comes. We have heard about the born again. That's what the awakening from darkness is. We pray, Asadoma Sadgama, that is the spirit of Easter. Lead me from darkness to light. That is what the spirit of Easter is. We want the light of spiritual awareness, light of love, light of fearlessness. And how these three, all these three are together, this being born to the awareness of the spirit is equal to be born to the freedom and be full of love. In our scriptures, when Janaka went to study the knowledge of the wisdom of the scriptures, when he was taught and he was asked to practice that, and after that when he gained success in spiritual practice, the teacher said, Janaka, you have achieved, he didn't say you have achieved success, he didn't say you have achieved the knowledge of Brahman or knowledge of God. He said, 
Janaka, you have achieved fearlessness. Abhayam by Janaka Pratosi. Janaka, you have achieved fearlessness. You have become totally free from the bondage of this place. Nothing can now make you down, make you fearful. Nothing in the world can make you fearful. That is the spirit of Easter. This awakening to when, when Jesus was resurrected and the lady saw him, his words, first were, words were, do not be afraid. That was the word. From what? You can take many meaning. Do not be afraid from that I was dead and I became alive. How did it happen? Or maybe in the larger sense, do not be afraid of anything. Anything, do not be afraid of anything. Not of disease, old age, death, nothing. The spirit doesn't become old, it doesn't become sick or it doesn't die. And you are that, you are that spirit. Being aware of our spiritual nature is real, the spirit of Easter. How we go there, you see? We often find that rebirth in our life. If we take our life, why we are interested in spiritual? There are many people who really don't care whether they want to become lead a spiritual life. They are very happy with their whatever their worldly life is. Getting a job, going to office, coming down, seeing TV, sleeping, going down, get old and then die. Not seeing of any other thought. This, the, when the question comes, then there is reborn. Why I am here? What really the purpose of this all this life and living thing? Just getting or being born, doing something in life and dying, no other purpose? Why I am here? That question comes. From where do I come? What is really my thing? I, am I born with this birth of the body and everything dies with the death of this body? Don't feel like. I feel like I am ever present, I never die. That is the feeling of everyone. These questions come. Then the questions come. Where do I go after that? What happens? So these questions lead us to now awakening. I want to know what really happens to me. Buddha also, he have given came. The spirit of Easter came to Buddha when he saw these things, sufferings of life. Is there any way to get rid of the sufferings of life, of disease, old age and death? The questions come. To us also like that it happens. So that's why it is said, the baptism says you are born as a baby, then you are born as a Christian when baptism is done. In Sikhism also there is some system. In Hinduism also there is, in there was Upanayana, the system when a baby was born and after some time something ritual was done that he would be born to the now religious life. Dvija, it's called Dvija, twice born. Even the birds are called twice born. First they are born as, a, as an egg. Then the bird is born from the egg. So a bird is born twice, once at the egg, next time with a fledgling. So this resurrection, this coming back to life is in all of us. To some, it's through some questions that come inside and you take to what is there, you come to um, take to scriptures, go to the holy persons, I want to know. To some it happens through some shock, to some through revelation, St. Francis went to the church, he was a young boy, just, uh, just an adolescent. Jesus comes in a bit and says, My church is crumbling, repair it. This is the revelation, and the chain, all oh, chains comes. The man of rich trader gives up everything, embraces the life of poverty, and great, becomes great in spirit. This is reawakening from the flesh to the spirit. To some, it doesn't happen at all. Sankaracharya says, how sad it is that the person has become old. Angam galitam valitam bundam dasana vihinam jatam kundam. 
the man has become old, angam, galitam, all the organs, in the, the sense organs and other organs have become weak. They have lost their vigor, energy is lost. Palitam mundam, the mouth, the hair, the hair has become white, he has become white hair. Dasana bihinam jatam tundam, the jaw has become without dasana, without teeth. No teeth are there. So that is common. But after that, vritho yati vihitva dandam, the old man having this characteristic, all eager, all youth gone, is walking with a stick somehow. Tadapinam unjati asha pindam, the problem is the fourth verse. Third, three things can come, the three parts of the verse. We all will become old if we live longer. Teeth will fall, hair will become white, and the, the organs will become weak. But what about the fourth thing? Are we prepared to be free from the pinda, the, the block, the huge block of desire that we have? Asha pindam. That's never melting. When spring comes, the huge pile of snow melts. But this pile of desire that we have in our mind is not melting to many of many it happens. So there is no awakening for those persons. And what happens to them? Kathopanishad said, Nrityosa Nrityu Mahapnoti Yariha Nana Eva Paschati. You will go from death to death. Death, birth is common. After death, there can be no death. After that, there will be resurrection in the form of rebirth. Then again, what will happen? Again, death. The life span is very short. Even 100 years if we live, even 105 if we live, long, prolonged, how much you prolong your life? But still it is very short. Then as if the short time goes and again you face death, death after death. When it will happen? When I will be, I will be going from death to death? Kathopanishad said, Ya iha nana eva paschati. When you, until you say, you see many, then there will be death to death. You have to learn to see one among many. Unity in variety. That is the purpose of life. Can you see one that goes through many? Can you see the thread that goes, passes through the flowers to make a garland? Sri Krishna said, I am the thread that passes through the garden, through the flowers to make a garden. What are the flowers that make the garden? All different forms, varieties, nana. But in between the nana, inside the nana is the thread that goes through. And beautiful garden of so many living, non-living, so many forms. This whole universe is a huge garden, but all strewn, all tied in a thread. And that thread is the spirit, the thread is the soul, the thread is our real nature. And that is the real nature of everyone. Search of the thread. Sutre Mani Gana Eva. That is the spirit of Easter. Try to identify yourself with that spirit. Never decay, never die, and also never born. If you die, you cannot be born. It was always there. That is our real nature. Body will become that. We'll be, when we go old, we'll have to take this stuff and uh, walk, tottering. But the fourth thing will not be there. The snow, pile up of snow will melt by the knowledge of self. This Asha Bindam will go. That is the search of the spirit of Easter. These are no desires. I live happily. What do you want anymore? Nothing I want. Subodhananda, the ask, what they ask by Swami Vivekananda. Subodh, Sri Ramakrishna's disciple. Swami Vivekananda, the brother disciple. Subodh, he was somehow very happy with it. He used to love Subodhananda. He said, Subodh, you ask anything, I'm prepared to go even in that elevated state. Whatever you ask, I'll give. Subodhananda said, Brother, you know, by the grace of Sri Ramakrishna, I lack nothing. I have everything. That should be our attitude. I have no desire left. If I say, oh, if I could live more, I could see the marriage of my grandson. Then that will never end. Grandson will have great grand, 
You will have after grandson, you have great granddaughter. You want to see them also. This neighbor, anything desire. This asha pinda has to go. If that snow doesn't melt, then the spring has not come. Then it's always winter. Easter has never come in our life. When Easter comes, spring comes, snow melts, this block, huge block of desires will just vanish. I am very peaceful and happy. What happens when desire go? People say, if there is no desire, how they will motivate to do something? Without desire, the world done is the best world. It will be not the motive to enjoy yourself something. Motive to serve, motive to love. That will be always there and love is always divine. Love doesn't die. You will never be sad at the deathbed that why I have so much of love for everyone. You may be sad. I love them, I try to help everyone, but why didn't I get the return back? Then that is the desire. I give you something, you give me something. That is not real love. That is Swami Vivekananda said, it's bargaining, it's not giving. Where is love for that? I am taking care of my child with the desire, very deep in my mind, when I grow old, they will be there to look after me. That is the shopkeeping. And that doesn't happen. And you become sad. You become sad not because your son or daughter doesn't look after you, but you become sad because you have that expectation from your son or daughter. Because you have that desire from your son or daughter. If you don't have that desire, you are peaceful, happy. My life was a blessing. Thank you, Lord. You get a great life. And then you smile and go. Go from darkness of identification with this body to the light of identification with the spirit. That's what the death is. That is freedom from the gate of this ignorance. Feeling I am this body. That should be the final moment. That is the spirit of Easter. To many things, there are also Dvija, it was saying, we all are Dvija, twice born. How twice born? First we are living the life, trying to achieve the success in life, and uh, trying to feel that whatever we will achieve, we will become a very successful and happy person. Successful person is not always a happy person. A person very successful in life may be a very miserable person. It depends on what his success means. He must have become the managing director of a big company, CEO of a big company. He still he may be a very miserable person because he had some other wish. Other wishes are not fulfilled. He wanted to be of some other bigger company. He was not he didn't get a job there and he's terribly miserable the wish he earns. Two hundred thousand dollars per year, three hundred thousand dollars per year, but still he is miserable because he had some other desires. Success and happiness, peace don't go. It doesn't really go mostly, not that always don't go, mostly it doesn't go unless we have the inner vision of practicing this struggle. The very nice reading that Thomas Kemp has heard the voice of Jesus in meditation that without suffering you won't be crowned, without fight you won't have victory. Struggle, struggle, struggle. That's what the message Swami Brahmananda said. There is no success without struggle in the spiritual life. We have to fight with our own thing. The flesh, the weakness, jealousy, greed, ignorance, delusion, thinking that this is mine, thinking that this body is mine, thinking that I will try to give this body every end. We will do exercise, we will do practice, we will make this body fit to practice spirituality, knowing certainly that it will become old, it will die, that is the nature of this life, of this creation. And knowing inwardly, but with this body getting old, I am not getting old. Mind is forgetting, body is becoming old, the head has become white, the tooth is gone, but I the self is same. Because I am not this body. This thing that comes, comes tremendous strength. You are not afraid. The fear is gone. That brings the message of his Easter. How this twice born comes. 
let us see from the example of some cells. Tulsi Das was a very saintly person. He got married, very, became very attached to his wife. <coughs> Once wife went to her parents' house, Tulsi Das couldn't live even one day without his wife. So he wanted to go and see his wife in her parents' house. While going for the rainy day, and there was a river in between, he got in spade. He had to cross, he found a log there, and he went on that, and with the log he crossed somehow. Mm -hmm. Then he went there, his wife was somewhere in the house, in the second floor, and uh, how he go? It was dark at night, raining, pouring very heavily, and he found there was one rope hanging from the window. He caught hold of that thing and went up, and his wife was stuck. We went up through the window of the wife's room in her parents' house. Wife said, how did you come? I said, thank you very much for hanging the rope. I never hanged the rope for you. Just today I came and you were so much running behind me. Let me see what was the rope. Rope was not rope, it was a snake, long snake, and he thought it was a rope. And you put the log there on the river so that I will come. I never put there. Go in the lantern of the light. And it was a crocodile, some dead body swimming. And that he came. Then wife brought her to her room and said, What you have done? You are so much attached to me, to my body. If a portion of this attachment of yours could be for God, how much you will get? You will get God Himself fire upon you to be attached to this mortal body, to this mortal relationship and forgetting God. That very moment, in that pouring water, Tulsi Das came away and he started in search of God. God in the form of Rama was the Easter and he finally got God. Where the Easter comes, where the resurrection comes here, first was the Tulsi Das was born, second this wife's incident becomes a point for resurrection, for new life. From Tulsi Das, who was too much attached to wife, becomes the Tulsi Das, a saint. And this was the moment. Yam, Mahindra Gupta, Sri Ramakrishna disciple, very sad with his father and his stepmother, lost total interest in life, decided to commit suicide, came to a relative, Sidhu, he said, he didn't, come, he didn't uh, confess that he, what a terrible state of mind he's going through. Then Sidhu said, would you like to see a uh, garden there and there's a holy man leaves. Neither he went to Dakshineshwar. Let's go. How far did he came? And he found Sri Ramakrishna there. Just the first sight was so attractive. He was speaking something. And uh, after they went to see the temple, came back, and when they were returning back, Sri Ramakrishna said, Come again. He writes his tithing, his diary, and which is recorded in the gospel now. What a sweet words. He said, Come again. And it was like a great scent, like Shukadeva is speaking to the devotees. That was the thing I could feel there. So his feeling was totally different. I want to go back to this man. The thought of killing was gone. Thought of dying was gone. Now the wish to live was there. Wish to realize I was there. The love has come. The transformation has come. Second birth, Dvija. Meeting a holy man. First visit it happened. Not that it happens in first visit to everyone. This attraction doesn't come. This change doesn't come. Girish goes. He met Sri Ramakrishna, many had said Sri Ramakrishna is a great saint who won't meet. His life himself was very, not, not very good, but Giris Ghosh was a genius. But he was a pleasure seeker, but he was fearless in his attitude. He was not afraid of anything. And very independent in, in his opinions. A very stubborn also. Great dramatist, great director of uh, the theatre. He was rebellious by nature, but he has some very good traits also. He was, he was extremely generous. He used to help people, poor people, poor in, people in distress, he used to help. So he went to meet Sri Ramakrishna. And Sri Ramakrishna was saying, Oh, is it dark or light? 
Then he comes, what is that? Lights are gone, it's already dark outside and this person is um, saying, asking whether it is dark or dark. He's now in a very elevated state. Girish Bhas couldn't understand. He's fading, it might, it might be poor. Or is he blind? He doesn't understand it is, it is already night. The lamps are burning. And this guy is asking whether it is light or uh, is night or day. He was not impressed in the first visit, you see. After that, he came again, Sri Ramakrishna bowed down, and he Sri Ramakrishna men, and Giris was then bowed down. Then Sri Ramakrishna bowed down is still low. So Giris goes bowed down to that mass there. Sri Ramakrishna bowed down is still lower, touches the ground, then Giris goes touches the ground. He was teaching him how to pay respect to a holy man. And he knew that that can be, can be transformed by that. Transforming a young into a saint and transforming a Giddish ghost into a saint, then there is two, two types of efforts. It's more difficult. Yam was very sattvika by nature. Giddish ghost is very rajasika and very pleasure seeker. So to transform him, it was difficult. And he had taken a very ill habits also. Then one day he saw Sri Ramakrishna coming towards his uh, place. Sri Ramakrishna going through the carriage. And Giddish was caught in a room in the, in the terrace of some relative. He saw Sri Ramakrishna going. And uh, he said, oh, then he felt his attraction. After that someone came and said, Sri Ramakrishna is calling you. He goes there, now the transformation starts coming. Change coming. Easter coming, resurrection coming. So it doesn't happen always in one visit that you are totally transformed, you start new life. New life begins, it becomes Dvija, second life has become. There is resurrection of the spirit. New birth has come, he is born anew in the spirit, in the life of the spirit. That happens to the ghost. So this rebirth, getting back, living back into the life of the spirit is, has to be tried again and again. We have to conquer our flesh. We have to kill our old self to be born in a new self. Old self which is deluded, which is attached to the worldliness, which is full of ego, which is with the ego comes all this pride, hatred, jealousy, competition, comparison. All this which were there, that has to be killed slowly, slowly and be born in love, fearlessness, unification, treating all as my own. That slowly will come. It won't come in a day. Every moment we have to be resurrected. Every moment of our life we have to try. That is the struggle. Swami Vivekananda, Swami Brahmananda says the struggle, struggle, struggle. And that has to be every moment. Whenever I get angry on someone, I have to look into myself. Why did I get angry? Was it right that I got angry? There was something lacking. So much I have read. So much I know. Angry is the sign of Hatred is the expression, violent expression of hatred, dislike. So why did I become like that? It is against the truth. It is following something that is untrue. If all in myself, whom should I agree upon? I don't get angry upon myself in that way. So struggle comes. Then comes prayer, then comes introspection, then comes what did I wrong, then comes Approaching the person, I'm sorry, I was angry with you. With those few words that comes from heart, the changes come. You, that person forgives you from the heart, and you become, you start feeling oneness. Hatred goes. So it's every moment is struggle. When we inquire into the wrong that we do, that is the sign of struggle. And then success comes. Then the regeneration comes. Then the reawakening comes in the form of the spirit. Saint Augustine said that famous saying, every saint had a past and every sinner had a future. If we say it's very difficult, we are a worldly person, how we can conquer this thing? We have so much attachment, we can be free from the attachment. Uh, we are worldly. That is not the right thing. Every one of us has to try to be reawakened to the spirit. 
That's what we are born. If we do not try, then we fail in this life. And what happens we fail? You again get admitted to the same school, same class. You are again born to try to pass the exam. As many times as you fail, so many times you are reborn to realize the one among many. That's what the spirit of Easter said. Another thing the spirit, the Easter spirit is, it said, do not be afraid. When we know we are spirit, by not being afraid of the things, circumstances come by two ways. One is through the process of jnana or knowledge of wisdom, thinking ourselves as the spirit. I am the spirit, what will happen to me? As that uh, saint in the forest said to Alexander, to, mm, mm, that I will not go with you. He said, I will kill you. Say, Alexander, you never told so much lie in life that you are going to kill me. Nothing can kill me. I am not the body that you see, I am the spirit. I am Atma. No one can kill me. You can chop this body into pieces, but what that happens matters that to me. That is according to Jnana, wisdom. He knows who he is. There is still easier way for many of us. Many of us may not be able to realize that I am the spirit. But we all feel, I am a devotee of God. I am a child of Divine Mother. When we think that, she is always protecting me. Why should, be, why should I be afraid of the thing? She will be there. She will take care. This faith in God, in the form of God, in the idea of God that you like to stick. This also gives, gives you tremendous fearlessness, tremendous strength. That Mother herself said, when you have any problem, just say to yourself, I have a mother. We need to have that faith, the Divine Mother. I am her child. And she is taking every care of me since my very birth. In everything that I have done, has been blessed and graced by her. Everything that I have achieved is because of her. Everything that will happen is because of her, because of her grace, I am still alive in this world today. And when she wishes, my play is done, then I go back to her, to her lap, to her bosom. No fear. Why to fear? I have my mother. This is the path of bhakti, full of the spirit of Easter. No fear. And this fearlessness can come to such a degree that when you lose, you lose a job, you are seriously ill, some relations are breaking at the point of breaking, you have no fear. There will be something good coming. Mother is there, God is there. So you will really be not afraid in any circumstances in the world. God will be taking care. Believe in the strength of your mother, Divine Mother, who she is. She takes care of the whole universe and your life. And also that she loves you too much. She loves you more than you love yourself. She is the real mother by whose presence our mother who gave us birth to this body. She loves. Mother's love is not really the love, the love of the human being. It is the love of Divine Mother that flows through our mother or Janani who gives birth to this body. When we have that was faith in that divinity of love. In fact, every love is divine. Pure love has to be divine. Then, when it is scope to get afraid of this body, relationship, jobs, everything will be all right. Who, who made, gave me the job that I had this time when I do the job? Who gave me this job? It was by the grace of Divine Mother. So she will serve. I don't need worry. Whatever I need to do, I will do that. I will start, I will send my resume, that will be done, but she will be here. That with the faith gives you tremendous strength, tremendous fearlessness. Another thing is love, joy. Always joyful. When you have so much of faith in God, or so much of faith in your identity with the Spirit, there can be nothing but joy, because you are near the reality. 
God is reality and that God as your spirit is the reality. Or your spirit as God is the reality. This is both same thing. When we see, look our spirit, our Atma outside, it is God. When we look that God inside, it is our Atma. Akam Atma Buddha Kesa Sarva Bhuta Sahistita. Said Sri Krishna. Arjuna, I am Atma, the self of every being that I am. So God is our self, and our self, myself is that God we have ourselves outside. It's the same thing. And when I have that closeness with the God, with whose nature is such an ananda, joy, bliss, then where can be misery? There will be always joyfulness. Joy is a happiness so deep that it cannot be taken away even by any intensity of sorrow. Joy is equal to peace, bliss. That will never go, there may be any degree of sorrow. Like the loss of a loved one, still you will be at peace. When your most loved one is lost, your most loved thing is lost. People love money, wealth, stock exchange, thing being lost, robbery, stealing. So many things can happen. You have so many changes things and you feel so sad. If you have that closeness with the Spirit of God, nothing can take away your happiness, your, your joy. It will be so glad, you are internally that glad, the gladness doesn't go. Or a failure to achieve a cherished goal, you want to do that, you are not getting that, you are sad. That will also not happen, you have that, if you have achieved that joy. Or a setback during the recovery from illness. You are sick, you want to get cured, that is not happening. That also cannot take your joy away. Sahanam sarva dukkhanam apratikara purvatam purvakam chinta vilapa rahitam and Sankaracharya doesn't use the word joy there, it says endurance, titiksha. What is endurance? How does it come? You are enduring the thing and you are sad inside. That is not the real endurance. He says endurance means you are not troubled by that thing at all. From what? Sarva dukkhana. It is uh, every pain, every suffering, every any misery doesn't bring you any sadness. Satanam sarva dukkhanam apratikaram. You don't even try to get rid of that misery. You, you don't notice that. It doesn't bother you at all. Chinta vidaparaitam. You have no worries, tension. That is the real endurance and that is real joy. Endurance gives us joy. And from how that will come? That will come again by two. Either know that you are a child of God who will take care during your birth, your life, your death, everything, every time that God will be there. Mother, if I know will be there. Or think that you are never born and you never die, that you are a spirit and that is everything that you see, your body, just the passing soul of the nature, different forms of nature. There is a stone, there is a table, there is a tree, then there is this body all different parts of nature and they go according to the law of the nature. They are created, they grow, they mm, become old, then they finally just disappear and merge into the real nature in these final forms, what this body is, except the few elements coming together. Everything is that. It goes there, merges in the real elements and again it becomes a part of some other body. What was your body today, it becomes part of some other body. So that regeneration and recycling of the body goes on. So why do I need to be afraid of uh, this change in the body? So this is the, for the wise person. When this is there, there is unending joy within yourself. You are a wise person. What is the definition of wise? Who knows the truth? That is wise. And the spirit of mystery is about the redirection. That's what the Christ did. What Christianity, that's very important faith, the resurrection of the Christ. And if, if Christ was not resurrected, he won't be proved the Son of God. That was important to give in Christianity. But for others, for especially for Hindus, and especially for the followers of Ramakrishna Vivekananda, Christ is God, not only because he was resurrected. Even if there was no resurrection, Christ would be God. Swami Vivekananda said, for me the Orientalist, I can worship Jesus Anything else other than God Himself? 
His life, his teachings, his renunciation, his love, his compassion, his fearlessness to the extreme can happen only in God. Being crucified, pulled, nailed, and to death, Lord, Father, forgive them. They know what they are doing. Who can say other than God? Know that uh, he goes there and pass over. Some say that uh, Judas, that incident, he himself said to Judas, go and inform them. All the play, flogged and tortured and this passion, peaceful, not a word of curse in thought or mind to the people. Is not that God? If we could, we could do that, we become God. When Swami Vivekananda was in Parliament of Religions, young man, give fantastic lecture unknown, suddenly he gave the lecture, it was so much appreciated, and after the lecture was over, there were many young women coming towards him to touch his hem, to touch his cloth. One Mrs. Blodgett was sitting behind. She said in her mind, Lad, now if you can take this, I will know you are God. This honor, this appreciation suddenly coming from the young and the known people, the cream of the society of Chicago, the hands of Vivekananda was unaffected. When people come, he was saying about the Atman, Atman never dies. Once you feel that he is Atman, to try to taste him, few cowboys started shooting. Suddenly, he was giving a lecture, standing on a platform, makeshift platform. And the bullets went through near his head, near his ear. He was he went on going lecture, he didn't run away, he didn't come from down to save his life. Because he was a god. That's what the god means. You are absolutely fearless, you are extremely loving, you are full of knowledge of the spirit, you have tremendous love for God, you have supreme faith in God. That he is guiding, then you are, you are a godly person, you are God himself. And that we all have to reach. That's what Swami Vivekananda said. Religion is not that you just read or just you try to do something very at the superficial level. Religion, you are not religious unless you have seen God, you have known yourself, you have not really become religious. So the reawakening and regeneration from the worldly life to the spiritual life. But the spiritual life is just at the beginning. There is a saying of light at the end of a tunnel. One Swami said, light at the beginning of the tunnel. You go into the tunnel, you are not finding the way. You find some light there far away. You serve the light and you go. When you reach at the end of the tunnel, that is the beginning of life. From there the life starts. You have, you have come out of the tunnel, out of the darkness, and then you have to walk in light. That is not the final light. Your struggle has not even over yet. You have found the way. You have come out of the darkness. But there the struggle starts. Then you go and search. The spiritual practice continues. Your effort to transform yourself continues. Your prayer becomes vigorous. Your desire to see the face of God becomes extreme. And then finally you see the face of God. You see that all are my own self in different forms. This whole world is nothing but God. Then that is real rejection, real awakening. That is real coming from flesh to be born in this spirit. For again, then we become real in the sense of first the body. That's why they said you get the mother gives you the body, but the teacher, your guru gives you the knowledge. So both are great. Without body, you will not have knowledge. How do you earn? How do you learn? But without Guru, you will be living in darkness. It was not life at all. So, Matri Devu Bhava, Acharya Devu Bhava. Both are like God. That is the spirit of Easter to try to transform ourselves every moment. We struggle every moment. Trying to go ahead from the weakness to strength every moment. That every moment is the bridge of being born and born.